What's up YouTube, Dfragon here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the new 5.0 talent trees for Death Knights, and what I think about them, and uh, talking about all the new moves and everything. Uh, what's playing in the background is some 3v3 arena footage that I had, that I decided to use, to keep you guys entertained while I talk about this. If you don't already know how the new talent trees are set up, it's going to be every 15 levels you are able to choose one move out of three different moves. I'm not really too fond of the new simplicity. I kind of preferred being able to put more work into actually building my talent tree. But as for the, fir the first three moves you get to pick are Roiling Blood, Corpse Explosion, and Outbreak. Looking at the first three moves here, the only new one that isn't familiar is Roiling Blood, which is more for PvE tanking. It allows your blood boil ability to uh, trigger pestilence to spread your diseases. That way, uh, tanks can hold better AoE aggro. Uh, Corpse Explosion, they're bringing it back. It does the same thing as what it did before. Outbreak still does the same thing. Uh, moving on to the level 30 talents. They have Lichborn, Anti-Magic Zone, and Bone Shield. Uh, all three of these do exactly the same thing that they do right now. And uh, as for Frost, if I were to choose one, I would more than likely choose Bone Shield for the 20% damage reduction. Being able to have that damage reduction along with being able to put out massive amounts of damage adding to your survivability like that since they love to burst frost DKs in arena it tends to help out um, moving on to the level 45 moves uh, death's advance uh, chill blains and asphyxiate now death's advance whenever your unholy runes are both depleted all movement and pairing effects on you cannot movement and pairing effects on you can't reduce you below 75% of your normal movement speed. This would be really good for unholy death knights uh, on being able to keep on their target if they're trying to get kited. Chill Blains does the same thing that it's always done, reducing the movement speed by 50% of the target whenever they have the frost fever on them and your chains of ice immobilizes the target by th for 3 seconds. But what I really like about these uh, three moves, one of my favorites, is the asphyxiate. They're giving Death Knights a 5 second stun. This move replaces Strangulate, but it in like the case that the target is immune to stuns, it acts as a silence instead. But that 5 second stun is really beneficial in the level 90 talents, or one of the level 90 talents, and I'll explain that here in a little bit. Moving on to the level 60 skills that they have is Death Pact, which is the same as ever, and Vampiric Blood, which is still the same. But the one that I like out of these three is the Death Siphon. It's a 40-yard range instant cast, and it doesn't have a cooldown. And what it does is it deals... Uh, it consumes a Death Rune to deal 3,100 shadow damage to an enemy, and it heals you for 75% of the damage dealt. If you're Frost, your, I think it's your blood runes are always death runes no matter what. Yeah, your blood runes are always death runes. So, since you always have two death runes on you, this is really helpful in getting back your HP. I would think it would be more helpful than Death Pact or Vampiric Blood, seeing as it, it don't have a cooldown, so you can practically spam it. And one thing that's going to help you spam it is, uh, spam it is in the next uh, set of moves. At level 75, you get to choose between Blood Tap, which has been changed, Runic Empowerment, and Runic Corruption. The new Blood Tap causes your Death Coils, Frost Strikes, and Rune Strikes to generate a Blood Charge. You can have up to six of these charges. And any time you use Blood Tap, it will consume three of those charges and activate one of your fully depleted runes and turn it into a death rune. Now this would be good for Unholy to use in conjunction with Death Siphon so that they could keep more death runes to be able to heal themselves if they're having survivability issues. Uh, runic Empowerment 
um, does similar uh, when you hit with a death coil, or frost strike, or a rune strike. You have a 45% chance to activate a randomly fully depleted rune. So that gives you like every two or three frost strikes or death coils, you'll end up getting one of your runes that's fully depleted back instantly. I don't particularly prefer this one. The one that I like is runic corruption. It's when you land a death coil, frost strike, or a rune strike, your rune regeneration rate is increased by 100% for 3 seconds. The reason I like this one is it's more reliable. Because, say, uh, you're using your frost strikes. Uh, you use as many frost strikes as you can. You use all your runic power on frost strikes. That gives you 100% increased uh, rune regeneration. So, you're going to be able to use your obliterates twice as fast and get your runic power back twice as fast that you can dump your runic power again to keep this regeneration rate doubled to be able to spam and do massive amounts of quick damage I have a feeling that they're really going to nerf this and coming up the level 90 moves is Gorefiend's Grasp Remorseless Winter and Desecrated Ground now the one that I tend to lean towards is Desecrated Ground what it does is it Desecrates the ground below you in an 8 yard radius. Does damage to them over 10 seconds. And it makes you immune to CCs as long as you're in the circle. So if you were to use Asphyxiate in conjunction with this to stun the opponent in the circle. And then blow your cooldowns. And you could do massive amounts of damage. And I would prefer this in arenas. As for 1v1, I would go with Remorseless Winter. Which does damage over every second for 8 seconds and it builds up stacks and each stack reduces the movement speed of the target by 15% and it stacks up to 5 times upon receiving the 5th application it stuns the enemy for 6 seconds that's also really good for massive amounts of damage uh, Gorfiend's Grasp lets you cast on a hostile or friendly target and causes all the enemies around that target to be death gripped to that target and deal around 3k damage. Well, that's all that I really have time to go into for now. If you'd like to hear more on this subject, just say so in the comments below and I'll add another video. I'll go into more depth or go into it in more depth. Um, please don't forget to check out my YouTube channel as you can see here and like, favorite, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.